Hello everyone, we are going to be dissecting an echinoderm today, and this is a sea star. Uh, so this is phylum echinodermata that this animal belongs in, and the class that it belongs in is class Asteroidea. Okay, so a typical looking sea star. Let's go ahead and talk about some of its exterior features. So what we're looking at right here is the dorsal side of the sea star. This is called the aboral side, which means opposite side of the mouth. Okay, we see that it has five rays or five arms that radiate out from the central disc area. Okay, and this gives it the five part radial symmetry that we see with a lot of the other echinoderms, okay? A special uh, structure that I wanted to point out to you guys is this pale looking plate right here. This is a, a, a sieve. This is actually the opening that water enters um, into the water vascular system, okay? And we're gonna talk more about that um, later. Um, echinodermata basically means rough spiny skin. And we can see that this sea star definitely has that feature as its skin is covered in all these spines. Let's go ahead and flip it over. We're gonna see now the ventral side of the sea star. This is known as the oral side because this is where its mouth opening is located in the central disc area. Um, remember, the way that a sea star feeds is that it will stick its stomach out of its mouth and this stomach is covered in these digestive juices and enzymes and it helps to break down and dissolve um, the food or, or the prey that it was able to capture. Okay. Um, radiating out from the central disc under each arm are the ambulacral grooves. Okay, so these grooves are where all the tube feet sit in, okay? So I'm gonna kinda give you a close up look of it here. So these are all the tube feet sitting in the ambulacral grooves. These tube feet, and we're gonna talk more about how they work, but these tube feet not only help it to crawl across the sea floor, but it also helps it to grasp and, and, and hold its prey for feeding. Okay, we see also on the sides here of the arm are the oral spines. So just like we saw on the dorsal side, there are also spines here at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and flip it back over. Um, an interesting fact here is that at the tip of these arms, the terminal end of these arms, there are uh, light sensing cells, okay, at the very tips here. And these cells basically help it to detect light and figure out which direction the light is coming from. Okay, what we're going to do now, since we just talked about all the basic external structures, um, is I'm going to go ahead and pick a side here or I'm going to pick an arm that's furthest away from the madreporite. Okay, again, this is the opening that the water enters into the water vascular system. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this arm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the first cut here. I'm going to cut off the tip of this arm. Okay, now I'm going to be able to stick one blade of my scissors right underneath the opening here that I made. And I want this to be a very superficial cut. I want it to be skin deep. So I'm going to carefully cut both sides of the arm just towards the central disc.
Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. So you have to be very careful and gentle here because you don't want to cut in too deeply. You don't want to ruin the, the internal organs. Okay, now what I'm going to do, since I cut all the way to the, the central disc, I'm going to take my forceps and I'm just going to peel back this skin and I'm going to make sure that the organs kind of sit back in. I'm going to pat it down with my forceps and ensure that it sits back in the arm here because I don't want to disrupt any of it. So I'm just going to peel back this skin and I want you guys to look underneath it. Okay, we see that underneath the skin there's this texture. This is actually part of its endoskeleton. We see these plates known as the ossicles. This is what gives the, the skin of the echinoderm that, that roughness and toughness. Okay, so there, these are called ossicles. And as we can see, the spines are basically part of that. The, these spines protrude from this endoskeleton here, okay? And it's all made out of calcium carbonate. Let's go ahead and, and hold the skin back. What we're going to immediately see once we expose um, the inside of the sea star are these two yellow looking organs here, okay? They're kind of these, these coiled up structures. They have a, a yellowish color to it. These are the uh, digestive glands, okay? Otherwise known as the pyloric cica. And what these digestive glands do is that they make the enzymes, and these enzymes are sent to the stomach so that the stomach is able to digest and break down the food that it eats, okay? So th these organs, these glands, aid in digestion. So what I'm going to do now is use my forceps to remove these digestive glands. And what we see here, sort of here in the corner, it kind of looks like this uh, purple looking caviar. These right here are the gonads. Okay, the gonads produce the reproductive cells, the gamete cells used for reproduction. Okay, and that's what this is right here. These tend to become larger during their breeding season. Um, and you're not able to really uh, distinguish between the sperm and uh, egg cells or if it has testes or ovaries because it really all looks the same. So it's, it's very difficult to determine what the sex of the sea star is. Okay, But during their breeding season, around spring or summer, they actually release their gamete cells. These organs produce the gamete cells and they're released out into the water. Okay, So they're, they're basically spawning. And this results in external fertilization. Okay, so fertilization happens out in the water. And what I'm going to do is just remove the gonads. And I just want to expose for you guys this ridge right here. Let me go ahead and wipe off my forceps. I'm going to run my forceps along this ridge. This ridge is actually part of the water vascular system. This is called the radial or the lateral canal. 
And right on the sides of this ridge are these little bubbles. These are actually part of the tube feet. These are the ampullae. Okay. Um, the ampullae act as these bulbs, sort of like valves. Um, when these bulbs are squeezed, when the valves close, this pushes water into the tube feet to make the tube feet ex extend and, and be erect. And this will cause the tube feet to make contact with the surface. Okay. Now when the ampullae uh, relax, water is pulled out of the tube feet. All right. Um, if we look underneath it here, okay, those are the two. These are the again. These are the two feet within the ambulacral groove, and we're looking at the top of it here, right next to this uh, radial canal. These are the ampullae. The singular is ampulla of the tube foot. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to cut further. Okay, I'm going to stick one blade of my scissor where I cut, where I finished cutting the arm. I'm going to go ahead and continue cutting so I can cut an opening around the central disc. Now my goal here is going to be not to cut out the madroporite because we want to keep the entire water vascular system intact. So what I'm going to do is just cut again skin deep, make very superficial cuts. You just got to be careful. Okay, so I cut all the way around to make this opening on the central disc. I'm going to use my forceps to peel it back. So I was careful not to cut through the madroporite. So I'm going to peel this back. And what I we will immediately see is its stomach. Okay, this thin membranous tissue right here. Okay, this is the stomach. So the stomach is actually divided into two parts. What we see here at the very top on the dorsal side, this is the pyloric stomach. And what this functions in is basically absorbing the nutrients, okay, from the, from the food that's, that's uh, brought in through the mouth, okay? Now below it, right, right inside of the mouth, is the cardiac stomach. Okay, this is part of the stomach that's pushed through the mouth and it's covered in these digestive enzymes that were produced from the digestive gland and it's going to dissolve the soft tissue and, and, and break it down uh, of its food and then it pulls the stomach back in and the nutrients are, are absorbed. Okay, so all this is, is it, its stomach. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the stomach now because I want you guys to see the entirety of its water vascular system. So I'm just going to remove all this. this all of this is the stomach. As you can tell, very simple type of animal. Although they have been on Earth for millions of years.
remo remove all that skin, exposing the radial or lateral canal. more of that stomach out. So what I see here is a very good shot here. If you look, here's the madreporite. Now right underneath the madreporite, you can see this light colored looking tube right here. Actually, I'm going to cut just a little bit more. Okay, so I want to kind of show you guys up close what I was talking about. So this, I'm going to use my forceps to hold it. This is right below the madreporite within the central disc. Okay, I'm holding it with my forceps. This is actually the stone canal. Okay, so once the water enters through the madreporite, it goes down this tube known as the stone canal. Okay, there it is right there. And then from there, the water will enter this ring structure. This is the ring canal. Okay, and then from there, the water is able to circulate through the rest of the arms. It's going to go through the lateral canal through each arm from there. That's why it's, it's a ring structure. Okay, and so the water will enter through the lateral canal and enter the tube feet to help it to move. Okay, but that just about does it for the sea star. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is its ability for asexual reproduction. The sea star is able to regenerate its limbs. In fact, as long as the central disc is intact, it's going to be able to regenerate all of its lost limbs. Okay, um, let me go ahead and show you an example of this. One moment. Okay, so here's a sea star that looked like it was in the middle of regenerating these two limbs right here. If you look at it compared to these other limbs, they're much smaller, okay? So it, it probably lost these two limbs and it was able to grow it back through regeneration. This is a type of asexual reproduction. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this dissection of a sea star, this fascinating echinoderm. Thank you.